Welcome to episode six of the Inside Nutley podcast. I'm your host, Tom Greco, and I'm pleased to be joined by Mayor Joseph P. Scarpelli and John Demmer, town historian of Nutley. Welcome, Mayor. Welcome, Tom. Welcome, John. Look forward to our conversation today. All right, John, what we'd like to do and start off with, with all our podcasts is uh, for our guests to tell uh, our viewers and listeners a little bit about themselves. Sure. Um, I was born and raised in uh, North Newark and came to Nutley around 1990 uh, with my, myself and my son and my wife. And, um, you know, I started uh, collecting Nutley items, you know, just uh, postcards and random things like that. And the collection uh, became so big that in, in 1997, I was asked to be the town historian, which I just realized uh, is 25 years this November. <laughs> Tell us how, how you became the, the town historian. So, so we went to this show in Rutherford that had this like street fair and I was in town for several years. I started to get interested in little things but wasn't really heavily involved. And there was this guy and he had all these postcards. He had tens of thousands of postcards of different towns. And I said, do you have anything from Nutley? He goes, yes. I go, he had 10, 20 cards. I bought them all. And then I started to get hooked on that because I thought, you know, postcards are a really interesting way to kind of see the way towns were back in the day because postcard history, you know, its heyday was around 1909, which is a great time frame. So I just kept buying and buying and buying postcards and I would start posting about them and I would start showing people. And I got heavily involved with uh, Fred and Jeannie Van Steen and, and Fred Van Steen was like uh, my mentor and, uh, and he and not without me knowing about it had had went to the town at some point and said listen this guy has a lot of history has a lot of uh energy about history of nutley we haven't had a town historian for a while um i'd like to nominate him for town historian and, and i just get this random call one day saying you know we're going to make you town historian come down we're going to have a, a you know the commissioners will all sign a thing and and that was in uh, november 1997 and I'll, I'll never forget that day and i'll never uh, forget Fred. He was a, a, a gentle man who knew probably more Nutley history than anyone I've ever known. I, I miss him a great deal. Yeah, both him and Jeannie really uh, uh, were the, the uh, catalyst behind the preservation uh, committee and, and getting the ordinance. And they worked on that for many, many years. Good people. Tell us about your, your house. I mean, uh, it has some interesting history. We got the house. And then I learned that this building in back, this condemned building had some history to it. And it was the Essex Film Club, which I'll, which I'll talk about. So we move in to this condemned house and condemned back building. And, and the town said, you have to take this building down. And I went to the town and I said, listen, for these reasons, we need to keep it. And they, they, at the time, I forget who it was. It, um, the, who was the building department guy? Um, the main the big guy. Having yeah. the door. He said, I'll give you 60 days. If you can do something with this building, no, 30 days. I'll give you 30 days if you could do something with this building. So while my family is squatting in this condemned house, dad's out back doing everything he can to pull this building back together. And then they came, inspected it, and they allowed me to keep it. And since that time, I have found out so much about what was back there and, and the history of that building that it's, it's phenomenal. It's, it's a separate building. It, there's the house. There's a garage that belongs to the house. And then there's this, it's this random building, which I, I've never been able to determine. I think it was an outbuilding for another property because back then in you know, 1911, when the house was built, properties were huge. There weren't, a, there wasn't a well-developed area where I'm at. I think this building belonged to someone else's property. So it's about 16 by 50. I found out that it was a motorcycle repair shop it was a jam and jelly factory for someone who worked with fruit preserves. And for 44 years, it was the Essex Film Club. And that was a club, a private movie club run by Bob Lee, who used to, who was a, uh, he used to work for WOR and he was a sound engineer and he used to love old time movies. So he would restore and show these restored silent films in this, in this clubhouse. And he had done it all up as a 
little mini theater. So you would walk in the door. There was this little alleyway. There was a little tiny ticket booth where he didn't sell tickets, but you would hand in if you joined the club membership. You just show that you're a member. You'd walk down. He would have all these uh, reclaimed movie seats from these movie palaces. He could seat about 50 people. Had a little stage up front with some little fake columns on it. A curtain that he could remote control from the projection booth. He had three different types of projectors back in the projecting room. And he would show these silent movies uh, to, to clients. And he did that. He, he had the Vesic Film Club for since 1939, where he used to previously live. And um, when he moved here in 48, he ran it for 44 years until he passed in 92. And the amount of people that have been here is really interesting. I mean, people, you know, stars that you've heard of from silent uh, movie eras would come here to see and hang out with Bob because he was such a he was such a cool guy. Wow, that's pretty amazing. Mayor, do you remember that at all? Not at all. Not at all. Only the only way I know about it is through John. It, it's a weird piece of history. Either you knew about it or you didn't. It, it kind of it's really odd. But they would advertise in the paper every week, and um, Bob never missed a show. If only one person showed, he would show it. If it was a snowstorm, he'd go out and shovel. Uh, he was very committed to. Uh, and, and his movie collection that he had amassed, um, his specialty was reapplying the original audio soundtracks that belonged to these movies and putting them on there. And his collection, when he passed away, went to, I think, UCLA or something. Um, and another interesting thing he would do is during the silent movies, he hired a gentleman who used to play in the movie palaces, the piano, and they would have a piano up front and that person would play well, you know, while the girls being tied to the railroad tracks be playing that, you know, that that rumbling sound on the piano. So he would actually have uh, this whole movie house experience here. And I've run into many people that have been here for shows. And I, I wish I had seen just one because it, it sounds magical. That's pretty cool. What What is the address? Where on Harrison Street is it? I'm on, uh, I'm sort of in between uh, Lincoln School and Mount Carmel on the same side and sort of dead dead in between there and the building is sort of down the driveway you, when I was driving to look to buy the house it was so overgrown I didn't even see the building at first I didn't even know the building was there mayor that's in your neighborhood where you yeah live. I mean you know listen you still walk down that that hill all the time so didn't know what was back there wow that's that's pretty cool that's a hidden secret of Nutley really if you think about yeah. it speaking of of buildings tell us what, what What's the most interesting building in Nutley? I'm very involved right now with the Van Riper House. I, I, I've, I've said it a million times. I think it's, it's the most endangered building in Nutley, and it's probably one of the most historic. And it's just gotten, it's like, um, <laughs> it's like this stepchild that you just want to raise and get done with. And I, I've been involved with it so long, we, can't, we just can't get it on its feet. It's had such a hard luck story, but it's such a fascinating building that potentially goes back to the 1690s. And we're trying to prove that it is possibly the oldest brownstone structure uh, in the county and, and, and possibly in New Jersey. Uh, there's a lot of history there, but the building just needs a tremendous amount of work. Um, we're finally now with Dante and Tindola as president getting some real good foothold on uh, fundraising. We've gotten a major grant that was uh, given to us. So that's the one I'm most interested in right now because that's a building that has been around, you know, prior to the Revolutionary War. You know, Washington's troops marched past that building on, on the retreat through through New Jersey. For those who don't know, the, the Van Riper uh, house is, is behind well, behind where ITT used to be on uh, on River Road. Um, Mayor, what, what are your memories of the Van Riper house? No, I, the, you know, the, the main thing I remember about the Van Riper house is that, you know, um, it, it did have a, a ten. Uh, somebody lived in there at, at some point, uh, and then it just fell into disrepair. Um, and it's been over the years, you know, windows. We tried to, to get windows uh, installed and the roof repair to just uh, kind of get an envelope around the building. But um, I, I think the, the latest uh, incarnation of the uh, Van Riper Trust that these guys have the right idea on, on how to preserve this and move forward. A question for both of you. How did the Van Riper house, um, 
how did it remain with all the development that was down there? Because that's kind of I, I, kind of isolated. I, I sort of credit that, I guess, to Carmen Arecchio. I think there was this push to save this building. And of course, the developer didn't want that because they could have put, I don't know, maybe 10, 20 more units. Who knows? He was able to, with the other commissioners, work out a deal where they parceled off that lot. And the, the deal was once Cambridge Heights was finished, then that lot would be turned over to us. But of course, in the meantime, that there was a, a major you know, fire in there, which, which damaged a good portion of the, of the interior structure of the building. Um, but that, that's how it came to be. There was this, uh, I, I credit Beverly Simcoe, she, she's no longer with us, but she was sort of the, uh, the driving force behind saving the house. And uh, she wrote just about every single person. I have, uh, I have pretty much all the things that she had, uh, her family gave it to me when she was first starting out. And, it is amazing how many people she wrote in reference to that house and its history. And uh, I guess she was just able to get enough of a foothold that uh, they were able to, to sort of wrangle that, that piece of property out of there and parcel it out, which was terrific save for Nutley. What about some other, other buildings? You know, another great building is the Nutley Museum. That was, that was a school, you know, to, to uh, replace the school that was burned down in 1874. That one was built 1875. That's, that was a school building. Um, and they also had vocational school in there for a while. They taught uh, like that. That's a wonderful piece of history um, that's still around. Um, you know, it's technically Nutley's oldest school, but it's not a school anymore. Whereas uh, our oldest running school is Yanikoff School, which was built in 1902. Um, but you have the Vreeland House right near the police station. That's another famous brownstone. You know, Nutley Brownstone was was huge. We had three or four quarries in town at one point, and that's all locally cultivated stone, and it was very desirable. You know, used in New York City, used all over the all over the world. Used on the Center Street Bridge, right, Jack? Yes, that's right. It's amazing how they were able to work and build these arches and these incredible stone structures. I mean, that bridge was never meant to last as long as it did. It's it's oh. unbelievable. That bridge was only built when the trolleys were coming through in town in around 1890, just because they had a wood bridge there before and they built it for the trolleys. If you think of the traffic that has gone over that bridge in its lifetime, it did a fam phenomenal job uh, for, for what it was. And when they took that apart, there, were no there was no mortar between those stones. They just placed together and the archway through gravity and uh, engineering um, held itself together for, you know, a little <laughs> over a hundred years. It's unbelievable. Let's let's uh, let's switch gears. Um, I, I not, the mayor told me this a couple of weeks ago, and I didn't know this, but uh, Franklin Avenue wasn't originally the main drag in town. Nutley was a growing town in the 1890s, and um, the center of town, which which we do celebrate with the Nutley Old Town Center, was really Passaic Avenue and Chest. Not all the businesses, the majority of businesses were up there. And Franklin Avenue had a lot of large parcels with large private homes on it. And it was only the decision to put the trolley on Franklin Avenue that kind of swapped that all around. The trolley, when it was coming out of Clifton to head to Belleville, was supposed to come down Passaic Avenue. There was a prominent resident in town. He was a lawyer. Uh, he put up such a fuss at that time that he was able to reroute the trolley. And then it took down, it came to come down. Franklin and then to center and then go over to Belleville and it was that change of the trolley that kind of made it sen made sense that well you have a trolley coming through on Franklin Avenue maybe that's where the businesses will be so there was sort of kind of this flip-flop the the center of town had moved from the area where it was on Passaic and Chestnut over towards Franklin Avenue and there's real there's a few bigger houses left and some of them have the sort of the warts on them you call it where or it's a business, but there aren't too many houses, houses left on, on Franklin Avenue. But that was, I have a wonderful old picture where you look down and you don't see a single business. You see just houses and green lawns. Speaking of Franklin Avenue and the trolley, um, there was a, a, somebody was having to do, redo their store line. And so uh, John was very uh, ingenious in getting the contractor to cut out a section of the old rail line and give it to him. 
on Franklin Avenue. <laughs> oh, I had been trying for decades. Every now and then I'd hear them tearing up the street, but PSNG would always, and everybody, every contractor would work around these tracks. They dig under them because supposedly they're very hard to cut or very hard to remove. And when this guy had it open and I went down there and he goes, well, he, I saw he had to cut away a few pieces. And I said, tell him a story and I'd love to have one. He goes, oh, he goes, I gave him away. And I go, who'd you give him to? And he goes, oh, my cousin over there who was on the, I go, is he from Nutley? He goes, no. I said, could you please tell your cousin that I need this piece of steel? So then I got it and I cut up a bunch and I gave different pieces to different people. Although I find that from taking them out of the ground, even though I cleaned them up, they kind of got all flaky and, and then, you know, they've been buried for a very long time, these tracks. They were, they were, you know, the trolley had shut down prior to World War II. Um, and when World War II came, it was all paved over it. They just didn't determine it uh, easy enough to pull up the tracks. So we're fortunate that they're still there. They're all over the place in Nutley. They're just sort of buried under the, under the asphalt there. Mayor, did you do you remember your your grandfather or your father talking about the trolley at all? Uh, a little, but uh, you know, I, I do remember the uh, there were trolley tracks and Belgian block uh, roadways of Washington Avenue when I was a kid. So I, I guess that the uh, trolley would go down Center Street and then make a right on Washington uh, and go past the uh, the uh, Big Tree Garage. Uh, and that was all co cobblestone and uh, still the, the tracks were there when I was younger. Let's talk a little bit about the schools. Uh, you mentioned the Anacos is the oldest school at 100 and how many years? Nin it's the oldest school that's still a school. It was built in 1902. There were sections of the what we call the high school today that were older, but they were taken down. So there's still a very old section of the high school, but it's after... That's an addition that was put on. Um, so Yanacol School is the is officially the oldest school that's still a school, and that's from 1902. And then some of the other ones, you have Washington School, which is 1911. Lincoln School is 1915. Spring Gardens, 1918. And Radcliffe, I think, is 51 or 53. I can't quite remember. When was the, the high school built? Well, the high school was in different stages. So... Um, there was, you know, the, that, that property was leased to, uh, uh, to the school board. So there was a, there was a, there was a home there that was a school. There was a wood, a wood structure from the Duncan family that was there. Cause remember all that school property and where the town hall is, those were all mills. That was all mill land. There, Nutley had a tremendous amount of mills in it. Um, so that was mill property. So, um, in around 1892, I think the first section of the old high school was built. Then there was an addition put on to that. And then the final addition was put on. And then the first two were taken off. So that old section you see of the high school now is really the third addition to the original high school that was there. And then of course, there's a more modern one that's up front. And then for a while, I'm not sure how many people knows, the high school was actually moved across the street to where the Franklin School is. And I don't know if those rails are still on there, but they used to, the wrought iron out front used to say NHS, Nutley High School, for Nutley High School. And then that outgrew real quickly. So then the high school went back across the street to its original location and the middle school became Franklin or the John Walker School, I'm sorry. Let, let's talk about some famous Nutley Ace, John. Um, oh. I think we, we all know the, the two most, well, of the Antioquia. Uh, right. Two most modern, famous Nutleyites are probably uh, infamous just as much as they are famous. Yeah, that I guess you're referring to Annie Oakley and Martha Stewart. No, no, Martha Stewart and Robert Blake. <laughs> oh, Robert Blake. Well, Blake was here for a very short time, so we didn't have any influence on him. But he was he was out in, he was out in Hollywood. There's there's always this rumor that he had graduated or went to high school here, but that was a different Michael uh, Robert. What was his last name? Gubli. Gubatosi. Gubatosi. Um, so Robert Blake, the, the one that we know as the actor, he I think he was only here until he was about three years old. And then then he went out to you know to pursue Hollywood. But when I when I think of famous people of Nutley, yeah, of course Annie Oakley always comes up, and that's an easy one to go to. I think about how many people were 
congregated in, in, in the section that we call the enclosure. I mean, that, that has to be the heart of where the most famous people, I mean, we have artists and writers there. You have, you have Fowler, you have Goodrich, you have uh, Edward Loyal Field, the artist, you have Hober. Uh, Mark Twain was a constant visitor to, uh, to, uh, uh, the, uh, to see his friend Bunner, uh, Henry Bunner, who was a writer. So you could spend, again, you could do a whole show just on the people the artist and 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 when you say enclosure too, back in the old days, the enclosure wasn't just the street that we know now. The enclosure was an area. It expanded beyond the street that we know now. It was you know went went upward a little more towards Whitford. It went over towards you know uh, uh, Nutley Avenue and, and Satterthwaite kind of area. But it was sort of this uh, colony that became very famous for being a home for writers and artists and. And many of the artists had homes on the street that we call enclosure. And many of those homes had studios in them with, you know, with the windows, the, the art window facing the proper way, which I believe is north for some reason, um, is, is the way you need to face your window. And uh, so that, that's a lot of, that's what I think of when I think, because a lot of people always go to the Annie Oakley thing or the Martha Stewart, but I, I like to celebrate the, the artists and writers that were here because, uh, their works are still being read and discussed and, and they're considered masters and they lived right here in town with us, you know? Well, I think that's, you know, that's one of the key components of what makes what you're doing so important is bringing this awareness of those people that many of us don't know uh, come from that, you know, originated here. I mean, that's, you know, again, you, you always refer to the culturally famous people like, like Martha Stewart or, or Robert Blake or Nanny Oakley but the, the artists, the writers, uh, we're not as, as aware of them as we should. Re remember too, on, and to get away from writers and artists, that uh, Jackie Kennedy's grandfather lived here in Nutley, you know, uh, uh, Bouvier this junior. Uh, and then Jackie, Jackie Kennedy's father was a boy here. He didn't live here. He didn't go to school. You know, he left uh, when he was fairly young, but, but the grandfather was in, is in politics here. Uh, built a home here uh, and raised a family here. So you have this, you know, amazing tie to that. Jackie Kennedy has written several times. I've seen writings where she mused about coming to Nutley as a little girl, not really understanding anything about the town, but she's like, you know, I remember my dad told me that he used to skate somewhere on this piece of water that would freeze over. You know, that's the mud hole. Um, so there's, there's always this joke about Nutley's the center of the universe and it's becoming less of a joke. It really is because I, you can do the, you ever hear the game, you know, six degrees of separation or six degrees of Kevin Bacon. You could do that with Nutley and you might even be able to do it in five steps because it is really funny how many things loop back here to a town that has less than four square miles to it. It's, it's oddly creepy the way uh, you can find so much history in such a confined area. Have you noticed how, how, how many times in recent culture Nutley comes up. I mean, I've seen Nutley mentioned at least three or four TV series over the last couple of years. That's crazy. Well, I think one of the, I think there was one of the TV shows, I don't remember who was the, the one with Colbert or something. I think one of their producers or directors lived here, didn't they? And, 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 you know, there's, so yes, I've heard the same thing. There's actually someone created a nice little YouTube thing where, they piece together every little bit of Nutley blurbs that were on either cartoons or TV shows. Um, and there's quite a bit. It's kind of funny how it comes up. Uh, I just found one recently. Someone asked me, said, do you remember uh, uh, Lou Costello saying Nutley in a, in a gag that he used to, in a bit he used to do? And I was like, no. So I started looking up and I found it. Wow. And he's just rambling off names. He's like, you know, I'm not going to Newark. I'm not going to Belleville. I'm not going to Nutley. And I'm like, there you go. There's another one you could put down, you know, <laughs> Lou Costello. It's, it's of, funny how it's referenced. One of uh, one of Letterman's, when Letterman had his, his late night show, one of the writers lived in Nutley, and Letterman would come out here many times, you know, knocking on doors, doing interviews for the show. Uh, very, you know, we do get a lot of play. Yes. It's That's pretty, the one I was thinking of. I couldn't say it was Letterman. You're right. It's, it's pretty amazing. I mean, uh, it just again, like you said, such a small town, and those of us that have been here so long, it's 
it's kind of uh, freaky when we, we, you know, you're just watching something. This I know I was watching. Uh, there's a recent show on Amazon, I think, with Steve Carell. Steve Carell's show was uh, Space Force, and uh, his mom or somebody was back in Nutley, New Jersey. And you're like, what? what? Did he just say Nutley? It's, it's pretty funny. It's cool though, right? It is cool. I think it's because it's a it's a it's a quirky, cute name too. You know, it kind of kind of just has that little thing to it. You know. Everyone can't resist saying, "Oh, you're the nut from Nutley," or that kind of stuff. You know. I wrote down a bunch of a bunch of uh, places that I just wanted to see if you had any knowledge or if it had any history, and I'm sure the mayor will as well. The Shoprite. Is there any uh, interesting history behind that? Well, I think the most interesting part of that. I mean, you know, it's a wonderful, successful business, and I, I like the fact that it started out as being called the Park Market because you got. This that area of Nutley had a lot of park, you know, it's it's the park oval, uh, the the park market. There were other businesses named Park, so it was the Nutley Park section of town. So I always I always got a kick out of the fact that when uh, when they started up that business, when it was just literally a storefront, um, you know, a tiny storefront, that it was the it was the park market. And it's, they, they carried that name for a long time, Nutley Park Shoprite. And it was interesting how that that business started with a, a handshake between the Lacurchia and the Epicino families and is carried on to the set. What about the Franklin Theater, John? Anything on that? Oh, Franklin Theater. That's a heartbreaker for me. I think that's I think that's one of the the biggest losses we had. And I, you know, and I get it. It's, it was a private thing. It wasn't doing well, but boy, I'll tell you, I get I get kicked in the teeth constantly when people go, how could you have let that theater go? And I'm like, I didn't have anything, I didn't let it go. Um, but you know, it, it's, I always say this about everything. I collect a lot of stuff and I say, um, there, you love something when it's new and you love something when it's collectible, but in that period where it's old and worn down is where the danger is. That's when you lose stuff. And that's what happened. You had that, that complex, uh, you know, in Clifton, the megaplex with the, the theater, everyone's like, Whoa, we got to go there. It's got this or that. And then three years later that kind of wears down and goes, you know, that place is too busy and it's too expensive. And, you know, I wish we had a theater in town. And, you know, I'm just like, well, we had one. Um, that was built in um, 1927, movie palace style, beautiful uh, um, uh, plaster work, faux painted columns. Uh, again, Dave Wilson and I did a really good presentation on that at the uh, Nutley Public Library on the, on the history of the Franklin Theater. Um, and it was just a beautiful building. I remember going there prior to living in Nutley, my dad taking me to see, I think, Star Wars there. And it was one theater and we were able to go up in the balcony. And it was like, I would stare at that. You remember that inverse ceiling they had up? up? Oh, I remember just staring up at that. Mayor, what are your memories of the Franklin? Well, I remember going there on uh, Saturday afternoon for the matinees and sitting in the balcony. And, uh, we, had, we had a good time there, a real good time. <laughs> my first memory, uh, not my first memory, but the, the vivid memory for me is seeing the Planet of the Apes there, first Planet <laughs> of the Apes, and just the, the ending and just being in that theater, which was, you know, massive for when you were a kid. And uh, just, uh, that's just that and, 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 uh, and I remember we we had never seen Gone with the Wind. They they brought back Gone with the Wind. A friend of mine and, and I and we were in high school, I think. And I guess we went to see it because we wanted to be cultured. And we we watched it, and uh, it ended. And we walked out we're like that, that. What the hell is the fuss about with that? We didn't realize it was an intermission. <laughs> <laughs> and we never we never saw that the second half of it. But. Uh, oh. But a lot of these things we're discussing are on YouTube. Some of these talks that like Dave Wilson and I have done or the presentation that John Simcoe and I did on Nutley, they are on YouTube for people to see who, who, who want to see, you know, learn about the theater or learn about some of these things we're talking about. We have documented it and saved it and put it on YouTube for people to watch. Give me top three significant events that, that have occurred in, in Nutley's history. Oh, I... I <clears throat> I think maybe not, could I, could I generalize it as opposed to a specific event? I could tell you the three things that changed Nutley to a degree that made it what it is. I mean, if you take Nutley's history, the three major things that happened in its earliest history 
was the fact that we had the third river running through it. If we didn't have the third river running through it, uh, we wouldn't have been put on the map as far as we had multiple textile mills, sawmills, dye mills. They all ran off that third river, which, you know, starts up, uh, starts up uh, near Great Notch and comes down, comes down through Montclair, through Bloomfield, uh, and through, uh, you know, through our area, and ends in the Passaic River. And actually where the Passaic River, where the third river goes into the Passaic River is our official, you know, northeast town line. When, when Nutley was being, you know, when the county was being separated and Nutley was being uh, parceled off at the time, it was, you know, it was uh, uh, Newark, and then it was Bloomfield, then it was Belleville, then we were on home town. That is our official town point there. But the third river bringing all the mills in, that was the first big boost for Nutley. That's what changed everything. The, the second thing that came in that helped us was in the late 1860s, early 1870s was the train. When the train line decided to come through, game changer for us, because now you could work in New York. It was only 11 mile trip, 45 minutes to get to. You could work in New York, but now you could come back home to more bucolic kind of a landscape setting. Um, so when the train came through, and not only did it come through, we got three stations in Nutley. We had the Avondale station over by St. Mary's. We had the, the Stitt station or what's called the, you know, the uh, Whitford, it was on Whitford Avenue uh, in Highfield. And then we had the Franklin station over on, on High Street, which is where Montclair Radiology is. That was a game changer because it brought people who may have heard of Nutley now able to come here and live. And then the third thing I think is the involvement of people like William Lambert, who I consider, he's like sort of my Nutley hero. William Lambert was born in England and he came to Nutley around 1890 and he studied architecture with, uh, with a famous Newark architectural firm. And by the early age of like 24, he was designing uh, his own homes. And there were these two early landowners in Nutley uh, named Hay and Barney. And they had acquired different, Barney was involved with the, uh, with the train uh, that had come through town. And they had done some kind of development and they acquired a lot of land. But when uh, Barney passed away, Hay took it over. And Hay, when he gave up all his interests, he sold it all to Lambert. And that's when Lambert, not only went into architect, was an architect, but he became a land developer. And he became probably the Nutley's largest land developer in, in our history. And this is a guy who, who got acquired land from some earlier landowners in Nutley, but what he did with that for his business and the way he developed, I think changed everything for us. Uh, he, he, he designed homes, larger homes. He designed parcels that were spread out he encouraged people, if you bought a parcel here and here, to purchase the one that he would leave empty in the middle so they would have bigger yards. Um, he literally leased the park, part of the park, from the town for three years, improved it, then turned it back over to the town when it was over. Now, it was all for him, too. He had a real estate business, but I don't mind win-win. I don't mind the fact that he did things, but he lived here. He changed the town completely. He He's credited with building over 500 homes in town. Uh, it's actually sort of a, a moniker, a kind of, you know, people all the time want to know, do I have a Lambert house? And I'm like, how do you even know about Lambert? They go, well, I heard that he was this, that, and the other. So I think between those three things, that's what really built up Nutley. And, 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 and those are the three major events that happened that brought us around. Yeah, I, I agree that Lambert was uh, so influential. Uh, he was not only an architect, a builder, a marketer, a realtor. Um, he was even president of the New York Chamber of Commerce at one point. So it's just that he was an amazing man. Um, you know, and he, and he, you know, he marketed different sections of, of town. The, you know, Nutley Park and Prospect Heights, and uh, really, uh, you know, really, he put us on the map. He really did. I know it's a podcast, but certain people will be able to see us, right? Just sitting yeah. here in front of me is, is one of Lambert's greatest marketing events, marketing things, was the Nutley in a Nutshell book. And this would open up and inside it would tell you how many, how many miles of sidewalk we had, how many miles of street we had, the source distance we had, the school we had. It would give the population. And this was his little 
marketing ploy, which people would send away for who even had no intention of living in Nutley, just because this thing is so adorable. Um, but he was a good guy. He, he, he did a lot of good things. Uh, the tra- he had an office on High Street, right across from the train station. And the story is he would have a driver in a car, which in the early years of Lambert was a pretty rare thing to have a car. And when people got off the train, they, you know, free car ride if you'd like to look around Nutley. But of course, it was sponsored by Lambert, who would be glad, more than glad to show you some of the homes he has for sale. But he did everything the right way. He developed properly and he cared for the town and he actually lived in the town. So um, I give him a lot of credit for for, for where we are today. Do you do you focus mainly on uh, historical um you know, like things we talked about as opposed to the culture, the historical culture. Do you deal with that at all? It's so varied. I mean, if I could, I wish I could make this a full-time job because there's so many avenues. There's so many ways to pursue it. So my, my first and foremost thing is I'm an avid image collector of Nutley. I have probably one of the largest image collections of Nutley early images. And I'm working frantically right now to get those posted and placed online somewhere. I'm, I'm feeling the pressure of age right now. So all this stuff that I've amassed, which is a huge, gigantic Nutley collection, I'm trying to document and get out there so that people can find it or see it. That's my primary focus right now is all this stuff that I've acquired over 25 years, not just letting it, when I pass on, get sold at some yard sale or something, of trying to get it documented out there, hopefully keyword searchable, so that when someone's looking for something that I've had, they'll be able to find it, research it, and use that material. Because otherwise, collecting has no purpose. There's no reason unless I can pass this on or save it for people. So that's my focus right now is to, I've kind of stopped everything else, and I'm trying to get everything that I have documented and online somewhere where it will exist literally forever, hopefully. It's great to know that uh, the history of Nutley is in great hands. I'm trying, I'm trying my best. <laughs> Tell us about the history walks. History walks are a lot of fun. Um, we do that in conjunction with the, with the mayor's uh, uh, farm, farmer's market. Um, and that's usually Dave Wilson and myself. And we get together and we'll pick a nice, sensible, easy walk that uh, incorporates as men, as much Nutley history as we can fit into them. And uh, we've had some very successful walks. The last one we had was a little low, but that's because we had to reschedule and it was cold. But we had, a, I think we had a walk one time that was 70 plus people. We were, we were stopping traffic. Um, and they're a lot of fun because again, like you mentioned, uh, there's a lot of older Nutley residents, but there's a lot of new ones. And for some reason, which I'm happy about, but shocked, a lot of them are really interested in history and the history of the town, which is, that's like, that's like fodder for a historian. You know, usually you're worried about people not caring. Um, I've had people reaching out to me and sending me things and wanting to know stuff. So uh, we get a lot of newbies uh, coming to these walks. I want to thank John and uh, because it's a labor of love, right? I mean, he's volunteers his time doing this. And, um, you know, um, we've had great walk and talks uh, with Dave Wilson also. And and I just want to commend them because they keep the history current. And um, if that's almost oxymoronic, but (laughs) it uh, it is true. You know, and they bring it it to to people um, and they they have a wonderful knowledge and a a passion for it. And, um, you know, the town just appreciates all their hard work um, like I said, it's a labor of love. It's volunteer, and and they should be commended for it. Thank you, John. I want to thank you for taking the time for joining us. Uh, I'm sure we're going to have you on again. And I hope uh, so. Happy holidays. Thank you. Good to see you both. Merry Christmas, everybody. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Thank you, everybody. Be safe and healthy. See you next year. Mm-hmm.